Hello, this is Steve from Beatles Leatherworks, and today's project is these cool Allen Edmond Fifth Street boots. Now, they are a bit worn out. The wealth is literally separating from the uppers. Let's say you got his money's worth out of these. So we're going to do a complete full soles and heels. Clean condition the uppers. Oh, on the inside, of the heel lining. Let's see if you guys can see that. That's all torn up. We're going to fix that also and make it look good again. And I've got a special friend today that's helping me out. Zeus! Come here! Come on! Come on! Up! Yeah! You guys see him? Oh, the camera's too high. Hold on. Let's try this again. Come on! Up! Good boy, yeah. Come on, come on, come up here. Come on. <laughs> there you go. That's Zeus for you. He's going to be helping me today. I think. <laughs> say hi. You want to say hi to everybody? No? Look, he's looking. <laughs> All right, guys, let's get started. So I think we're going to take everything off. I mean, for the midsole. To the sole, to the heel base. Just take everything off. Jeez, man, this thing is in bad shape. Well, this time I'll promise that uh, I'll be doing a better job editing. You won't see the video twice of me doing the same thing, I promise you. Last time I was uh, rushing a little bit and it was late. Hey, I'm just trying to make sure that you guys are paying attention. That's all. Alright? Yeah, I knew what I was doing. Not really. I mean, I know how to fix shoes. I don't know how to edit videos. Well, I know a little bit. I get by. So this thing is in bad, 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 bad shape. I mean, it's lost its... Look how wide it is here, right? You see that? I mean, the whole footbed is like moving it's not even supposed to be doing that right got to make sure that we glue that back exactly in the same spot wow 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 all right let's continue now this one's got some welt issues right here which is not a problem we'll stitch that back it's just the stitching has come loose now this one here this is this is basically called a gemming right it's a piece of fabric that gets glued onto the foot bed which the uppers come on the side and the welt gets all stitched together now when that gemming comes loose the shape of the foot can change you see how wide it got now so we got to be careful 
and make sure that we glue this back to exactly where that was so we don't lose the shape of the size of the boot okay now it is it's easy to put that in the wrong place too narrow too too wide so if you if you look at it real closely you can see where the original line was it's very faint but it's there so that's going to be our guideline okay and we'll glue that back and um, but once this gets done the customer is going to go through that breaking period because you're literally putting new cork new midsole new soles and all of a sudden everything is where it's supposed to be without altering that fit he's got wide feet what size are these this is a three triple e 13 triple e okay so he's got wide feet so we don't want to change that fit okay and um, but he's got to go through that breaking period because once we put everything together we'll compress it down and flatten that foot bed a little bit but not too much where it's not gonna you know it's gonna lose the shape of his foot we don't want to do that okay okay so at this stage what I'm gonna do I'm gonna work on the back of the heel a little bit before we start assembling down here so all right let's continue something something is just not right here now I took some measurements of the width on the sole which is the original sole okay so this doesn't this hasn't stretched this is still the original shape same with this one this is still the original shape now it does expand a little bit but it doesn't stretch out of shape right something is just I mean the footbed it's kind of wider let's see if I can show you this the footbed which is here it goes underneath the gimming and the welt shouldn't stick out further than the welt okay and that's what it's doing here for some reason so it should be it should be similar to this right it should be the welt should be wider but he's rolled over onto the edge and kind of kind of misshaped the uppers over the welt I mean if I if I remove the gimming from the footbed and, and and take this out a little bit now it's going to change the width of the shoe which I don't want to do I think I'm just gonna have to deal with it the welt is in pretty good shape it's just something is just not sitting comfortably with me but the measurements exact from here to here four and five eighths exactly like the sole it's it's exact same shape as it should be well I marked I marked where the where the line should be on on the gimming right here it's three quarters inches from the edge of the footbed is where the gimming should be it seems to be measurement wise it seems to be okay it's just visually just something that's something I'm not comfortable with uh, I'll figure it out as I go along all right let's continue so a regular heel lining okay basically we put a piece of leather back of the heel thin the edges out right here so it doesn't f the foot doesn't feel the raw the kind of rough edge there in the corner the edge and then we stitch on top and we cut the access off now with the boots you can't do that okay you gotta come, come all the way up to the shaft there now you've got a pattern right here okay so what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut the inside piece of leather same shape as this but it's so difficult to find out what size that where you know the pattern is because if you put a piece of paper on the outside here to get that pattern that's not the same size it is on the inside this is going to be a lot wider so what I do is I cut a piece of leather right just just a piece of scrap leather okay temporary glue it in there right on the 
money on the inside. Just roughly glued in, in the spot there. So what we're going to do now, we're going to go to the sewing machine, okay, and we're going to stitch this right here. Stitch that line all the way up, come back the other side, all the way up. Now, we're going to stitch it without thread, okay? So what it's going to do, it's going to just punch holes into the leather piece on the inside. Once we finish making those holes, we'll pull that out, you'll have your pattern. Alright, let's continue. Alright, so we've got the piece of leather cut out. So I've scabbed the edges right here. I left the inside the middle part here a little bit thicker than obviously the edges. Because when he's sliding his foot in you don't want that edge you don't want those edges to catch on him. Now we have our we have our pattern on the inside. Just going to apply a little bit of glue right along the stitch line. <coughs> Hopefully when we stitch it will be right on the edge. Can you guys hear that buzzing in the background? That's the air condition. The fan is running. I'm sure you guys can hear that with this microphone now. This sucker can pick up everything. I mean everything. Well, you guys remember that song I was telling you about? You know which one it was? Four Non Blondes, I think. I said, hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, yeah, yeah. I said, hey, what's going on? <laughs> yeah. I didn't want the microphone to pick that up. <laughs> all right, all right. I'll stick to my daytime job. Cracks myself up. Alright, I think almost there in this sucker. It's kind of hard to work in there, you know? Yeah, I got you guys singing it now, huh? Yeah, that's right. One of the viewers said that was, they called it something, I can't remember what they called it. Something Worms, Song Worms? I don't know what to call it. Alright. Oh! See, I'm leaning into the camera to speak, but I should be leaning into the microphone. It's mini hammer time. Stitching time. Let's continue. Now this is a patching machine. So it's got the arm here. 
you slide the shoe in like that or whatever it is shoe or purse now most of these are treadle like with a with a pedal right um, this is a fairly newer one which got a small motor to it and the head turns like this it depends on which direction you're stitching now there is there is a stitch adjuster which basically you know gives you the, the the length of the stitch okay and what you're gonna try to do is try to go in the same holes as what you have already now are you gonna make all of them the same holes no but you're gonna try go slow enough you know you can control you can control the stitch you know now remember that that hole pattern we had on the inside this is just kind of you know I'm gonna follow that hopefully it'll be right on the edge of the leather I can't really see what you're stitching underneath got the blue tape on the teeth of the foot because you've got these right here you see so what happens this goes down and moves it goes down moves the material so these marks will always these teeth will always leave marks on the leather so what I do is I put a little tape on there so it doesn't scar the leather of the, of the item the shoe whatever it is really unsightly marks. You could tell that somebody's used a patching machine because of those marks. This isn't one of my favorite machines. It is not one of my favorite machines because it doesn't give a really like fine stitches you know you can adjust it with a needle and the thread but still it's not a it's not really for delicate jobs but it is it is very versatile you can use it you know I think I just jumped off the edge of the leather underneath I, I felt something Sure did. It didn't even catch the leather. All right, so we're gonna regroup real quick. We're gonna take out these stitches right here. Okay, and we're gonna position that leather a little better, and then we're gonna start restitching again. All right, let's continue. Uh, hammer down my stitches what happens is that the needle pierces through the leather right and it opens a hole so it can stitch it so if you leave it those holes are pretty wide open so when you hammer it down it closes the stitches now sometimes we forget to do that and you can really tell in pictures that you haven't hammered your stitches down, so don't forget to hammer your stitches down. It's not too bad. Is it perfect? No. As long as that edge right there is not too high, so his foot catches it when he's getting in and out of the shoe. I think it'll be good. Oh, and I and I condition the inside of the uh, leather lining while I was at it these are some big feet man so size 13 triple E double extra large shoe trees I'm fitting in there get 
it in there. There we go. That'll give it some shape. All right, so we're gonna do the cork, glue this, glue, the, rewind. I'm gonna stitch the welt, pick the stitches, put the cork, and let's continue. Oh, I did stitch the toe, the welt area there, so don't, you know. I know somebody's gonna say, hey, you forgot to stitch the welt. No, I didn't. We'll grind that off and level the surface. Now we need to cut some midsoles. This is a this is an Italian leather. We use this for like lady soles, right? But um, since I don't have any midsoles this size, we're going to basically cut a pair out of those. So he's going to have Italian leather from midsoles, German leather for outsoles, performed on an American shoe by a Armenian craftsman. United Nations here. Cool, we got our midsoles. All right, let's continue. All right, so we've got the soles and the shoes glued already. Got my LNM and stamps. Now these high spots right here you're looking at, the access stamp, once I sand the surface of the leather, all that will be gone. It will be nice and clean, Allen Edmonds, plus recrafted in USA. You know, somebody was asking me one time how I got into this business. Well, of course my father was a, um, he made shoes from scratch, you know, he was a shoemaker back in Lebanon. And uh, we moved to the States here uh, in 77. And uh, he opened up a little shop, like a 450 square feet. I, w I called it like a walk-in closet, you know. And um, pretty much basically I've been artistic all my life. And um, once we came here in sixth grade, I sat next to the teacher. And all I did was draw and, and paint. I uh, didn't speak much English. Um, very few words. Uh, it was mandatory to speak, uh, to study Armenian, Arabic, and English where, you know, back in Lebanon. But not much, you know. 
So, uh, so I got in a lot of trouble, you know, sixth grade, seventh grade, got in a lot of fights because you couldn't speak English and, you know, kids pick on you and you can't defend yourself with, with words, you got to defend yourself with fists. And um, seventh grade or eighth grade, I broke my nose in the fight. That was many of nose breaking throughout my teenagers, teenage years and, and my early 20s. And um, used to get in a lot of fights. You know, you're young, you're hot headed. Somebody looks at you the wrong way, and you know, and it happens sometimes. You know, I took some beating, and I did some beating myself. Not that I'm proud of it, but you know what? It was either me or them. So anyway, throughout my throughout my teenager years, I worked with my dad. About in my early 20s, started helping him out full time. He started taking breaks, you know, going vacations with mom, and and I would run the shop. And I remember one day um, he was gonna go; they were gonna go to California. I told mom that I was gonna, hey, I'm gonna clean up the shop. Don't tell dad, okay? So literally, as soon as they walked out of the shop, I closed the door. I started gutting things inside. I took all his machines, cleaned them all up, repainted them, put new drywall, new drop ceiling, new lights. They're, I guess they were gone for about two weeks. When they came back, he comes in the shop. He just stood there like at the door. He's looking around. He's like, where'd you get the money for the new machines? I'm like, Dad, those are your machines. He's like, no, they're not. I said, Dad, go over there and look at it. So he was like, he was like in awe that, that his machine look, the machines look so good, you know? Unfortunately, you know, he didn't enjoy it too much. In 91, he passed away. And um, and I had to get out of that location because it was such a small place. So I bought this property in 96, tore it down, built a new building. Two years later, I relocated the shop where I am now. And I'm, I'm you know, I tripled the size of, of where I was. And now I'm busting up my seams. And um, over there, we had no hot water, no heat. Um, no air condition and I swore that if I ever relocated I'm gonna keep the shop cool in the summer and warm in the winter it's 70 degrees here always summer or winter so when you come in my shop you get a little chill in the summertime because it's man it's it's 70 degrees and and I swore to God that I'd keep that steady because I was so tired of wearing like heavy clothes and space heater in the winter time trying to get warm summertime sweating my butt off you know you can't really work in that atmosphere and you can't focus you can't concentrate so anyway fast forward in 20 20 plus years and now i need more room you know unfortunately i'm on a skeleton crew and things get a little bit behind sometimes and and you do the best you can to kind of keep things moving along you just have to prioritize things which are, which one needs to get it done faster try to get that done if they're going away they need their items fast so I'm very blessed right now with the work that I've got. I wish uh, my dad was around to see it. Uh, he wouldn't believe what we're doing now if he would have seen it himself. He literally would not believe it because it's so different from what he was doing and what we're doing. The volume that we're doing now, I mean, it's, it's incredible. It's a hundred times more than what he was doing. And, um, and we try to make it work, you know. So it's a little bit of background where I started from. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. All right, let's get back to work. Let's go, let's go. Let's do some hammer time. All right. So these are drying now. They're dry. We're gonna wait a little bit longer until we get a little dry more and then we'll continue. All right, let's continue. Now this is barely gonna fit. I mean, it's a tight fit. Side, back, and and you know JR soles are are pretty big to begin with, pretty big cut. But man, these are very lucky that it fit. Now if it didn't fit, I would probably cut it from a big bend, like a big piece of leather, like we did the midsole, but in the JR soles. Somebody's watching me. Look at him. Zeus, what are you doing? What are you doing? Want to go potty? Let's go potty. I think nature calls. You know 
knows where the door is. You wanna go potty? Where's the door? You wanna go out? Let's go out. Come on. You wanna go? You wanna go out? Let's go out. Come on. Where's the potty? You wanna move your head? You wanna move left? You wanna move right? Move left? You wanna move your head? Let's go. Left? Right? You wanna move your right? <laughs> Poor dog. All right, I'll take him out. Let me hammer this. Okay, Zussie, give me a break. Give me a moment. Let me finish my hammer time. All right, boy. All right. All right, I'm coming. All right, all right, I'm coming. I got one more soul to hug. I can't even talk. I got one more soul to hammer. I'm coming, I'm coming. All right, just be patient. When nature calls, man, he's got to go. He's got to go. Okay, okay, Bubby. Okay, all right, all right. I'm almost done. Oh, I know, I know. You got to go to the bathroom. I know. Hold on. You're going to make me mess up. Don't make me nervous. I hear you. All right, almost done. Right there, see? All right, all right, I hear you. I'm coming, I'm hammering as fast as I can. All right, nature calls. I gotta take him out. All right, I'll be back. Let's continue. This is called an outsole stitcher because it stitches on the outside. How so stitcher? We're gonna use green thread on the on the bottom right here. You can use any color you want. This is a pretty durable machine. It's a pretty tough machine. Look how much leather it's going through. I mean, JR leather is dense to begin with. It's going to go. It's going through the midsole, the outsole here, and the welt. So basically, what happens is that an awl that comes up. Let me see if I can show you guys. There's an awl, like a needle, not a needle, but an awl that, that makes the hole. You see that coming up right there? Where are we? Let me see if I can get it from this angle here. This guy right here. See how it's going up? It's coming up. It's piercing through the, underneath the sole, through the welt. Okay, then it's making a hole, and then the needle's following it. You see the needle? That's the needle right there with the little hook on there. It's following it. Without the awl, the needle the needle will break. I mean, that's all there is to it. The, the awl is basically making a hole for the needle to go through. Here, let me see if I can re rethread this real quick. So basically what it's doing, it's going in, okay, let me get that thread again through there, there we go, the awl comes up, the needle follows it, it goes, it goes down, picks up the thread, see how it came back up through the slot, 
and then it goes around the top of the bobbin there and it makes a little loop. Imagine that spinning I don't know how many times per second. I mean these these gears are incredible. These are just awesome machines. I love these machines. But you gotta maintain them. Mine's a little dirty at the moment, but the problem with this machine is that the more I clean it, the more it acts up. No, seriously. I swear to God, it's as much as I clean this thing, every time I clean it, something happens to it and doesn't stitch properly. So I kind of leave it alone. Keep it a little dirty, not too much, but I keep it oiled up. You have to keep it oiled up. Alright, let's continue. <clears throat> okay, now, this is called a baroguing tool, right? Barogues, like it makes patterns like this on the uppers. See that? But the problem is that one of them broke right there, so I can't really use it for what I wanted to use it for. So, what do I do? I improvise and got to use it for something. So I came up with this idea where basically I put a pattern around the sole. I just freehand this. I mean, I don't. I think it looks kind of cool. I'll show you in a second. I mean, nothing struck aesthetics, just a pattern. And there she be. Do y'all think look good? It kind of adds to it, doesn't it? I like it. Looks cool. All right, now we get to put the heel on. Heel base, I should say. This is the actual Allen Edmonds heel base. I got it from a manufacturer who makes it for Allen Edmonds. One of one of the sides are higher as you can see it gives it arch support there that's on the inside part of the foot so basically there she goes just like that so once we get to put this on here nail this attach our top lift to it and then clean shine them up and we're ready to go all right let's continue Edmonds uses on their heels. I go a little bit, I go a little bit more. I put nine nails on the heels. I mean, you can do whatever you want, right? Really, everybody does it differently. I just don't want my stuff to come apart. Right? 
and it has happened in the past before. I'm not perfect. You know, I've done jobs before, and sometimes it does come apart. It happens. I mean, it's normal. It happens. It's part of it's part of life. You can't be a hundred percent. Oh Lord, do I try. But uh, but if you can help, if you can help, you know, try to make it as tight as possible on those heel bases. Now, I don't want this video to be an hour long. So next next time you see it, it will be finished, okay? Let's continue. Alright, welcome back. We're done with another project. Flip that around so you can read that. Vibram Heels. JR Souls. Recrafted in USA. Uh-huh. Not too bad. Green thread. I can see it too much. I still gotta clean that off a little bit. I mean you guys remember what it looked like, right? Man, what a big difference. Same with that one. Look at that. I think they turned out pretty good. Alright, so once again, if you have any questions, please email me at beatos at yahoo.com that right there uh, thank you for joining me I really appreciate it it was fun I had Zeus with me too Zeusy you want to say goodbye come on jump you don't want to jump come on jump yeah there you go say bye see ya alright thanks guys for joining we'll see you again next time take care <laughs>